What do you do when you find out your partner made an AI chatbot of their ex? We'll get into that in a bit, but first, confronted husband on if he's having an affair, and he asked for a divorce. I'm 34-year-old female, husband is 35-year-old male. We have two kids, 5-year-old female and 3-year-old male. The last 12 hours feel like they didn't happen, and I feel like I'm in shock. I suspected my husband was having an affair. I made a Reddit post about it earlier today, deleted my account after all of the advice. I checked his phone and found basically nothing except one logged out of Insta account that I'd never seen before, and barely any following or followers. And in screen time it said he'd been on Instagram for hours every day when I thought he barely used it. After that I was planning on hiding a camera in our house just to see, but I walked into my room and saw him typing away on his phone and I just immediately demanded to see it and who he was texting. He didn't show me and just stared at me. I know my face gave it all away. He put it away, shut our bedroom door, and told me that he'd planned on waiting a bit longer and that he's sorry, but he wants a divorce. He wouldn't give me a specific reason why, other than he thinks it's needed and wouldn't admit he's having an affair. He just stayed quiet. I went into the bathroom for a bit, and when I came out, he said he was going to leave tonight but that he'd be back early tomorrow morning to wake up our kids and drop them off at school, so they didn't think anything was off, and then we can talk more about next steps, and that he'd like us to have 50-50 custody of them, but that he thought it would be best if I'd found a place to stay by the end of the weekend. And he even offered to freaking help me find a place and suggested my sister, and said that if I want him out of the house until Sunday night, that's fine. He owns our house outright, My name isn't on it, so I'm pretty sure he can just boot me out. I know I need to talk to a lawyer, but I don't know where to start. I've googled, but just can't make sense of it all. And I want to know where he is, but he's turned off Find My Friends, so I know he's with her. And I know that I need to be so careful with our kids. I thought about just taking them and going to my sister's, but I think that would be a bad look. He's primary caregiver and a stay-at-home dad and I don't want to have custody turn into a fight because I think I'd lose unless I could get proof of his affair. I still haven't told my friends or my sister or parents and I don't know how. And my poor babies are so little and are going to be so confused. I cannot believe this is happening. I can't believe how calm and cold he was about the whole thing. I think the one silver lining you can possibly grab onto is at least this was all triggered and happening now rather than going on for god knows how much longer and perhaps being more complicated or more painful than it already is. I think OP should definitely get a lawyer yesterday, especially if this is in the United States. Even if it's just his name on the property, you're married, so likely there's some kind of ownership or claim to that house for you as well. Beef Stew wrote, Don't leave the house no matter what he says. That would be a bad look. If you do, his already well thought out plan will go in his favor and not yours. Please, you deserve better. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy tricky relationship topics, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, my 25 year old female, best friend, 24 year old male, proposed to me. I'm confused and mortified, where can we go from here? Frankly, I'm still in shock that this happened, so this might be all over the place bear with me, all fake names, etc. Jordan and I met in university two years ago. We both started at the same time and because of our ages, we were both considered mature students. So we quickly became firm friends as we shared a dorm and we joke around together about us being old enough to be considered mature in our early 20s. We weren't on the same course, but given we'd lived together, we would hang out pretty much all the time whenever we didn't have a lecture. We joined a bunch of societies together, went drinking every weekend together, etc. It was a pretty sweet gig because it meant we were at least never alone. Obviously we made other friends, both alone and together, but we were always each other's number one at the end of the day. At the moment we're on spring holidays for Easter, and while we haven't hung out constantly, we decided to make plans to visit each other's hometowns because we're from very starkly different places. Today we went to mine, mine is a big city central. This morning we went there and were wandering down the streets, doing some sightseeing because he's never been. There's typically a lot of street sellers here trying to sell you everything from hot dogs to fluffy Pokemon hats. I decided I wanted to get a caricature done. I'd never had one and I thought it would be funny to get and hang over my bed when we got back for term. I asked Jordan if he wanted to get in and he refused. No worries, so I sat down to get it done. 
They don't take very long, five to ten-ish minutes. So I stayed, looked straight forward at the artist the entire time. He finished the caricature. I loved it. So obviously I turned to show it properly to Jordan. When I turned though, I literally don't even know what to say. He's down on one knee holding up a ring box. I don't even really know what he said. If he did the whole like proposal speech thing, because I was so confused, I was barely paying attention. Remember again, this is a super busy tourist city. So this has drawn a mini crowd now coming over to cheer us on. I couldn't help but burst into laughter. To be honest, I thought this was some kind of odd prank type thing. We never have been prankster types or whatever, but I couldn't come up with a reasonable explanation. So I just laughed and laughed until I looked at Jordan and he looked genuinely heartbroken. So obviously I asked him something along the lines of, you're not being serious. This is the only thing I remember him saying. He shut the box, stood up, shrugged and said, I guess not anymore and walked off. This left me standing pretty awkwardly in this gathered crowd of people, a lot of who were giving me dirty looks, which made me incredibly uncomfortable. The plan was to meet up back at a hotel that we had booked rooms next door to one another, so I figure that's where he's going and head back that way, but he's not there. So I wait and I wait, and he still doesn't return. I text him out of concern, this was at 1.15pm, it's currently 6.20pm as I'm writing this, just asking if he's okay. He responds with a long message back, which I would post because it's an odd read, but I won't out of respect for his privacy, in which he basically accuses me of leading him on, asking why I didn't break up with him sooner, saying I had publicly humiliated him and that he thought I loved him the same way and that he felt our relationship was strong enough to consider taking the next step. Now this is completely out of left field. I literally have got no idea where in the world he's got this idea from. The closest we've ever physically been is a hug, hello, and goodbye. I've never even jokingly flirted with him, for exactly this reason. I've had too many friendships collapse because they can't tell the difference between serious, interesting, and joking banter and friendships, so I've been extra careful to not. We've never kissed, never been on a date, never had sex. I do not find him physically attractive and I wouldn't want to be in a relationship with him. I don't understand where on earth he's got this idea that we are. This isn't something he's ever brought up before this and I'm genuinely bewildered. He hasn't returned to the hotel yet. I periodically knock to check and I've been listening out for him walking up the hallway or anything. Nothing. I haven't responded to his long paragraph because honestly... I don't know how to. I'm just so stunned and taken aback that I genuinely have no idea where to go from here or what to do. I haven't told anyone I know in person yet, mostly because I don't want to bring this up to people who know Jordan. So here I am, turning to strangers on Reddit instead. What in the world do I do? I mean, I don't know what world this guy's living in, but from what OP described, it sounds like they didn't have anything close to an actual relationship. At least, not any relationship that you would consider past being friends. The only excuse that could reasonably come to my mind is this guy just had absolutely zero experience or exposure to the idea of what a relationship ever is. I feel like even people who get to 24 and have never been in any relationship whatsoever still have a rationalization and a clear idea of when it's appropriate and not to, to propose to somebody. Sumner Setting wrote, Has he ever been in a relationship before? Like, actually had a girlfriend? Is he like the type of fundamentalist Christian who believes in no kissing before marriage or something? I don't know. My instinct would be to ask him to talk with you and have it pointing out all the ways in which you're not actually dating. Never asked each other out on a date specifically. No physical intimacy. Like, when does he remember this relationship being official? But then again, he's probably off of his rocker a bit if he's created this delusion in his head. I think you're going to have to walk away from this friendship. Can you reach out to any mutual friends and ask them their take on this? If you trust them not to gossip. Our next story is, I, 22-year-old female, just caught my mom, 42-year-old female, sexting while still being married to my dad, 51-year-old male, and she knows that I know and I don't know what to do. So this happened within the past, oh, couple of hours. I, 22-year-old female, had just gotten home today for my small break. 
my college has Good Friday off, when my dad, 51-year-old male, asked me to check my mom's, 42-year-old female's, computer as she's been acting suspicious, like closing browsers when he walks into the room suspicious. So I went onto her laptop, I know the password, and booted up her Discord. I found some incriminating things and awful things. She's talking to multiple people and lying to all of them. She has fabricated a different woman, a different life for all of them. I wasn't being sneaky enough, and after I found the real incriminating stuff, like sexting and couple talk stuff and whatnot, I scrolled through so much and I was still in March and I have no idea where it began. We have two mobile homes and my room in my mom's office is in the one that we used to all live in, and I tried to call my dad over as I wasn't willing to take pictures. Though I was okay with taking pictures of the chat that had actual pictures. I don't know, but something in my mind felt horrified when things were being described, and he couldn't right away. I thought that it was my mom coming over, so I quickly shut down our laptop for the second time, which is where I freaked up, but it was my dad. I tried to get back into her Discord, which she had now logged out of through her phone. She knows that I know, and she probably knows that my dad knows as well, and I'm not sure what to do with all of this or what to say if she confronts me about it. Do any of you have any thoughts or advice? This is also not the first time she's done this, as she has done this before when I was really young. I think OP's dad needs to know, even if OP didn't screen cap all of that stuff, which I don't blame them, especially if it's containing any pictures of your mom doing that kind of stuff, let alone describing the kind of stuff. I think snooping in general is a pretty awful thing, but you did it. You found out the truth, and it's a very painful and blatant truth that I think the dad needs to know. Zogglewoggle wrote, just tell your dad jesus all these people telling you to just run away and it's none of your business horrible people your mum is cheating on your dad if it was the other way around people would be screaming for you to tell your mum. your mum sounds like a horrible person this next story is my fiance 29 year old male has been sending pics of me 29 year old female without permission how can i talk to him without blowing up I just recently found out my fiancé, 29-year-old male, of 5 years, has been sending intimate pics of me, 29-year-old female, to his friends without my consent. Haven't yet confronted him and am unsure how to go about it in the heat of the moment. He has always been respectful as far as I know up to this point where sexting is concerned. I'm confused why now he'd feel the need to share this with his male friend. How can I address this current issue without blowing up to move forward in the long-term relationship? So I think the problem here is, OP's asking, how do I confront him so that we can move forward? Me and OP, in this situation, would have very different priorities. If I were in OP's shoes, I would be considering stuff like legal action. You go and do something like that and you break not just my trust, but my privacy? then I'm not trying to think about how to keep the long-term relationship going forward. I'm thinking compensation either financial or in the comfort of knowing there's some legal book that got thrown at him. Our next story is, my husband, 30-year-old male, and I, 31-year-old female, had a major argument about two years ago. I know I went too far, but thought we were past it. My husband wants to divorce. Do I have any hope? Context, when the incident that led to all of this happened, my husband and I had been married for three years. His family became physically and emotionally harmful to the point that he filed restraining orders and cut them out of his life shortly after he graduated college. About two years ago, my husband and I were on an anniversary vacation. He was having some trouble with keeping track of his belongings and kept asking me to help him double check that he had all of his stuff before we left hotels, restaurants, etc. I honestly have a hard time with doing that because my family was basically a group of fully independent people who lived in the same house, while he came from a more communal home where everything was done as a team task and everyone checked on each other to make sure everyone had what they needed. Vacations aren't really his thing, so he lets me plan them all to my liking and very rarely makes many requests for them at all. Edit, he doesn't refuse to help, it's just that I have way more I care about on vacations than him so he lets me call the shots for them. It's kind of what I prefer. He made a request to make sure that we went to one restaurant in particular during this particular vacation, which was to a town I'd been to many times before. I hadn't checked to make sure said restaurant would be open on the day that I'd planned to go there, and sure enough, we pulled up to find out it was closed. 
He got pretty upset with me because he couldn't believe I hadn't done my due diligence to ensure we did the only thing I asked for on this entire trip. He started to tell me that when he and his family used to plan trips, they'd call and check hours of desired places. Between his insistence that he wished I could operate more communally like his family did, and getting so mad about this restaurant, I had gotten fed up with being compared to others and snapped at him. Do you want to go back to your family if you hate the way I do things so much? He was stunned silent, got up and walked out of the car and down the road from our hotel until I finally called him around 30 minutes later. In the moment that I said that, I wasn't thinking about the context in which he had moved on from his family or anything like that. I was only trying to make the point that he could find people whose ways he preferred if he didn't like my ways. Yes, I fully realized that I went way too far with that comment, regardless of what my intent was. In the two years since, I have never felt the same warmth from him ever again. He has continued to remain dutiful as a spouse and mostly treats me the same, but I just know his vibe and presence and it's never been the same. I have apologized profusely many times, but it still hasn't seemed to fix anything. Flash forward to yesterday, my husband is headed out of town with some fellow teachers from his school, where he works, on a sponsored teacher training conference. He informed me that he was filing for divorce and that I would have time while he was out of town to process things. He isn't planning on fighting me for any possessions, told me to take whatever I wanted, and told me that he had this on his mind for the last few months which was why he picked up extra hours at a second job to pay off our shared debts before he filed for divorce. Assuming he's telling the truth, and I've never caught him in a lie, he's doing therapy with an online therapist for the last year, and he's still not able to move past how much I hurt him. He said that he loves me but cannot stay with me if he doesn't feel safe that I won't cross lines and hurt him in ways like this. I am absolutely stunned. I never meant to hurt him in the way I did, but we're all human and have bad moments and make mistakes, sometimes huge ones. It's hard for me to reconcile the fact that he has remained as dutiful as ever while unsure of whether or not he wanted to stay with me. He is a wonderful husband and I'd like to think that, save for my massive mistake, I've been a pretty good wife to him also. Is there anything I can do to save my marriage? I mean, it honestly sounds like this was a decision he came to and made a long time ago. And honestly, I feel like if there was a chance, if there was hope, it would have been something inspired by him giving you the chance to try to prove this stuff or work through it before it got to this point. Odd Welcome 7940 wrote, Okay, so this is purely a possibility, but it comes from a man married to someone who will never fully understand his past, a lot like the two of you. I think a lot of other things are at play he may not be sharing with you. Someday, those will need to be addressed if you can turn this around. That said about your comment. I come from a set of traumas even some of my best childhood friends had no clue about. People in my home every day hanging out didn't understand. I still came from love, love and abuse, love and lost people, love and addicts, love and a lot of evil. So when I try to share about my past, it can be hard to see where one ends and another begins. A lot of children from crazy pasts end up in that same boat, so we try to bring the good with us and leave the bad, but we don't always see the difference. Your husband was walking a dangerous road without realizing it. He brought up his past. He opened a door and you took a bad step through it. You thought it was just an aggressive statement. However, to him, you took all the good from his past and declared it as bad. To him, he likely feels you basically said everything that made him or who he is, is evil. That is tough to let go of. That is almost impossible to let go of, in fact. I would bet deep down the reason your husband is such a good, diligent husband, even though he was falling apart, is because he is terrified of his past being what defines him. So he gives it 110% and never repeat the evil things he dealt with. Horribly, he's also afraid if his whole past is bad and he can't hold on to the good, he will never know who he is. He also probably feels entirely alone in that struggle. If this is true and you want any chance to fix this, your only hope would be to explore his past with him. Offer to listen. Show a real desire to actually understand it all. My wife initially thought of my past as just my past, like most normal people. Until the day I told her she actually has no clue who the heck I am and probably never will. She didn't even argue, really. 
She did, however, start asking more and more. She did show a genuine desire to want to find out. She asked things out of true curiosity. She took a broken man who everyone thought was fine, a perfect husband. She took him and made the small child inside of him feel not alone for the first time in 20 plus years. Maybe that's what you may need to try to do. Sorry for rambling by the way. Even if I am wrong and this isn't your solution, I wish you the best. I also wish it for him. This next story is, husband, 35-year-old male, made chat box of his ex. I, 34-year-old female, have been married to my husband D, 35-year-old male, for 8 years. Before we got married, he had a serious relationship with W for about 3 years, which ended when he found out she had been cheating on him the entire time, to someone she's now married to. This messed D up pretty bad, although by the time we met he was pretty much over it, or said he was and acted like he was. We've never had trust issues or whatever. I noticed about a month ago that he was being weird with his phone. I didn't think much at first and didn't snoop, but then I noticed he had what looked like a messaging app open, and the name at the top was W's name. The idea that he'd be talking to her was pretty inconceivable, but I asked to see the phone, and he got extremely embarrassed and begged me not to look. Which I did look, and there was a chat with him and her and a picture of her. Or so I thought. He told me, and I didn't believe it at first until he proved it, that it isn't actually a chat with her. It's an app where you can make a chat bot and give them a backstory and talk to them. He showed me everything. The rest of the ones he'd made were dumb stuff, but the one with W was basically him replaying when he found out about her and then berating her over and over. He had like 20 of these he'd done at least. I read through most of them and there was nothing sexual, but a lot of very aggressive language. I'm confused. Weirded out. Full of the ick. I do not like W at all, but this doesn't seem healthy or good. I told him he really needed to talk to a therapist to work through whatever he still needs to work through with W. He's pretty anti that idea, which is frustrating because I am a therapist, but the whole thing has me weirded out and I kind of want to insist on it. He says it's not that weird and that since he's not even doing any sexual stuff and it's not causing us any problems, it's not really my concern. But then he was hiding it so he kind of knows it's freaked up, right? So yeah, I guess what I'm asking is, am I the weird one for being weirded out by this? Or is this really as weird as I think it is and he should just go deal with it? We're currently trying for kids and this whole thing just has me freaked out. A million percent, OP's not the weird one here, and I would put a complete pause on the whole trying for kids thing until you have this figured out, or at least until you fully understand what is actually going on with the psychology of this. I just can't imagine finding something like this out about your partner and then willfully trying to go forward with bringing a kid into the world, knowing that your partner still has these issues. Our next story is, am I, 39 year old female, wrong to be mad that husband, 52 year old male, made Easter travel plans against my wishes? Been together for 17 years with two kids, 8 year old female and 8 year old male. In addition to my 9 to 5 job, I have a small crafting business, and my husband participates in packaging and selling at markets. The weekend after Easter is our first event of the season, so we need to get everything prepared for that, including making products to sell, their body products, so I have to prep them fairly close to market season because of shelf life. I was counting on having this weekend to do that prep work. We also really need the income because he's on an extended leave from work after an on-the-job injury. Two weeks ago, my husband brought up the idea of visiting his mom, three hours each way, for Easter. I wasn't keen on the idea and reminded him about the crunch time, but said that if we had everything ready beforehand, it might be possible. We have very little done right now because my father, 80-year-old male, moved in with us shortly after that, and getting a room cleared and him situated has taken most of our free time lately. Yesterday, he drove up solo to see his mother because his uncle was visiting. I assumed that would be enough for the holiday visit, but when he came back, he told me about the restaurant they'd chosen for Easter dinner. I got pretty upset because we discussed this ahead of time and he knew we weren't in a position to travel again. He told me that I hadn't refused but I reminded him I hadn't accepted. We just tabled the discussion. 
Now he's acting like I'm canceling his plans when I never even agreed to them. His mother lives 200 miles away and we visit her several times a year. My mother is 80 miles away and we see her once a year. I don't want to see my mom anymore. She's a narcissist so we're low contact. We're going to be near his mom in three weeks for a concert so I suggested we visit her then instead and make a weekend of it. He says it doesn't count because it's different than visiting on a holiday. I don't see the difference because his mom isn't doing anything holiday related, it's just a chain restaurant dinner. At least if we stay local, the kids can do easter egg hunts rather than spending 6 hours in a car. If you're reading this far, thanks. Would love to hear about other people's takes on the situation. I just think in general, you're going to be the jerk if you make any kind of travel plans, especially holiday related, without ever consulting your partner, especially when there's kids in the mix too. It's just an insanely selfish and uncaring thing to do. Happy Hippie Tree wrote, How would you feel if he took the kids and you stayed home to prep? Without him and the kids around, you might actually get something done and have some time to yourself, which I bet you need. Yes, you would not see your family on Easter, but I don't think it really matters that much. Our next story is, My 15-year-old female, Dad wants custody of my brother, 10-year-old male, but not me because I'm donor-conceived. My parents had me using a sperm donor because they thought my dad couldn't have kids, but then they ended up having my brother. Now my parents are getting divorced and I wanted to live with my dad because he's less drama than my mom, but my dad decided he doesn't want custody of me because I'm not his biological child. He only wants my brother, and now my mom is hurt because I said I didn't want to live with her and she's sulking and just being so hard to be around, and since my brother lives with my dad most of the time now, it's just me and her except for every second weekend. I keep asking my dad for help, but it's basically like he doesn't even care about me anymore and doesn't see me as his kid. So now I'm wondering, did he always pretend he loved me? Cause he always knew I was donor conceived? And he's angry with me that I keep calling him dad and asking him for help. I feel like I made a huge mess of this whole situation and both of my parents are mad at me and I don't know how to fix it. What can I do to make it better with my parents? The sooner OP identifies and realizes that they shouldn't even want their dad with the way their dad is treating them, it might be for the better. Even if it means you have to put up with your sulking mom who maybe even kind of feels the same way as the dad now after what OP said. It might be the kind of situation where you try to keep a relationship alive with your brother and you just have to try to forge your own way. Hard According 5241 wrote, 1. Your dad is a POS. I would stop trying with him at all and put all your energy into a good relationship with your mom. Opie responded, how do I do that? She barely talks to me and she won't stop sulking. Kelpie Main replied to that and said, try being honest. So, mom, I made a huge mistake and unintentionally hurt you in the process. I thought dad would be the more easygoing parent and that's why I asked to live with him. I now realize I was mistaken and that what I thought was less drama was actually his indifference toward me. I'm recognizing now that you're the parent who actually cares about me. I know my actions hurt you. I'm hurt too and I really need your support as my mother. I'd like to try to work on things and, if possible, recover from this. I know we're both having a hard time. However, sometimes it feels like you're so hurt that you're mad at me or even hate me and I don't want to feel that way. I love you. Is there anything that we can do to try to fix things between us? Either way, I'd like to see a therapist, if possible, to navigate my own feelings here. I've gone through major abandonment myself, as dad has made it clear I'm no longer his daughter. I really don't want to lose you too. If she lacks the capacity to be receptive to that, whatever her reasons, you need to make a plan to get yourself out of the situation the second you legally can do so which means accessing school counseling and pushing yourself academically and or with work such that you have options for college, trade school, etc. when the time comes to move out. I'd guess, if she's otherwise been a loving mother, that she will be receptive to the above though. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another absolutely tricky relationship topic, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, Check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.